All right, good afternoon, guys. Back at it with another MLB DFS video. We had ourselves a day yesterday, and we were massively due. Um, the thing that kind of, like, scared me at one point was this Baltimore Cincy stick that we played. I was worried it, like, wasn't going to happen because it was delayed. They played, like, not even three innings, delayed to, what was it, like two hours, mm -hmm. roughly? And then they resumed play. So I was kind of like, oh, crap, it's not going to play out. The steer hit one out. Austin Hayes went two for five with a run and three RBIs. This Westbird kid, the prospect they brought up, uh, one for four with a run, RBI, and a walk. Uh, steer went three for three. Adolis Garcia are one off, one for four, but got a home run, and Strider looked like Strider. So 184. So anything to recap about yesterday? Uh, we all, we had the pitching matchup of a lifetime in that Angels game. Then Emerson Cease put up 50. Castillo looked pretty shaky to start at his – stuff together and end up going seven innings for 46. Um, highest scoring hitter on the slate was Steer, so that was good. Seattle was the stack we needed to get to if you really wanted to bank. Uh, Orioles, Seattle was the nuts. I mean, with some Detroit sprinkled in. Ibanez basically in price had 30. Jake Rogers had 30 in price. Just some interesting, interesting scores from across the slate, but today's slate is absolutely massive, so I'm not sure if we'll see Detroit at the top. And for it being this massive of a slate, it's kind of crap. I shouldn't say crap. There's some spots to get to, but so Otani, Gosman, Valdez, Clayton Kershaw, Brian Wu, Zach Gallen, We'll be here forever if I just list everybody, but this is all the pitching for today. It's unreal. So where are you going to? Yeah, absolutely infinite options, it feels like. I mean, at the top, Otani, Gaussman, can't complain about either of those plays. I mean, Otani's got like a 30% K rate. White Sox haven't put up over like five runs in four weeks. I can't... <laughs> I can't see Otani really dudding here. Well, I think he be he'll be necessary. We'll see. Um, just depends where the offenses end up because he's you know not cheap. He's eleven k, so it's kind of hard to get to him. Same with Gasman. Valdez seems like inappropriate order. I feel like Valdez should be like below those guys in price. Um, so I'd rather pay for those two than Valdez. Kershaw. You know, strikeout stuff tends to dip in cores a little bit. Um, but is Kershaw their minus 300 favorite? So I don't hate Kershaw either. Brian Wu. I mean, I didn't think I'd see him at 8,900, but, <laughs> um, you know, he's, he projects really well. Decent matchup. Good favorite. I think they were like minus 230 when I checked. Uh, he's not all that owned either, showing 7% right now. Maybe that gets up to 10, but still, it's not all that much. Gallon. Uh, I saw this game as like, you know, like minus 120, minus 130. But Gallon at home has been so good. I, I think I would lean Arizona here. Uh, especially, like, Bradley on the other side does have the K upside, but I think he could walk some guys and get in some trouble. So, I think Gallon could get you the win here. Peterson at 15%. I'm just... I'd rather jump off a bridge or something. That That is just not going to happen for me. I get Milwaukee sucks against lefties. I mean, I'm hoping this game just rains out and we don't have to deal with it anyways because it's what it's looking like. But there's just no way I'm playing him. Bryce Elder, sure. Uh, doesn't really have the strikeout stuff, but he has the leash to get you the quality start and the win. They're decent favorites against the Twins. We saw what Strider did to them yesterday. You Darvish, decent. Pittsburgh game is in question, though. Joe Ryan on the other side of that line game, probably not. 
this middle range where it's Wu Wells Kopec is probably where I'm gonna land, just where the where construction's going. Um Kopec, you know, on the other side of the Otani matchup, which isn't great for the win, but he does have massive strikeout upside. Wells the same. Uh he's looked phenomenal the last month and a half. Roger Suarez has also looked pretty good. Uh I don't know if I really want to play him. That doesn't seem all that fun. Monty, nah. Whitlock, huge price increase. Uh, Miami gets Jazz back. Probably not for me. And I don't think I'm going to play anyone below that. Yeah. So they're kind of thinking about it now. There are more spots for pitchers and, you know, for it being like a massive 15-game slate. You know, you can definitely get different. I kind of like Zach Gallon today. 10K saves you a little bit of money instead of going to Otani, Gosman, or Kershaw. Only projected for 6% ownership, so that's a little interesting. Originally, I liked Clayton Kershaw, and I was looking at him like, why is he 1%? And then I see the matchup at Coors, I'm like, okay, that makes a lot more sense. So I don't think Kershaw is a bad pivot, but it's if someone like if Ryan McMahon gets a hit, it's going yard. You know what I mean? You just that's the one thing you kind of have to worry about. Bryce Elder, I kind of agree with you as well. Ninety seven hundred projected for one percent doesn't have to strike out upside, but can go deep. Tyler Wells is interesting. Ninety two hundred versus Cincy. Projected for 7%. You know, Kopech, kind of the same thing. You know, you obviously got Otani being 23%, Gosman 12 and I think the Angels are like minus 130 or something like that. So the thing with Kopech is you would minimum need um, six innings, you know, He's got the K upside, so you better just hope he strikes out the Angels a lot and then maybe, hopefully, the White Sox get to Otani a little bit. Kind of pray for that. So in Chicago here, the Canada of wildfires are, like, actually hitting us, so it's, like, a little gloomy outside. So there's, like, rumors going around that the Cubs and Phillies game might not happen. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it's going to play out, but who knows? I'm not taking a shot on Joe Ryan against Atlanta. Brian Wu at 8-9 is interesting. Washington just doesn't strike out. I also think um, David Peterson getting all this ownership is borderline insane. You, know, you might need to get yourself checked out. Hopefully, like you said, the game just gets rained out. We don't have to worry about it. Um. Yeah, there's something about Galen that's like standing out, but you know, if you were to play Wills or like Kopech, even like Galen, you can definitely get to this chalky Dodgers stag that's going to happen today, and they're all obviously in core, so their prices are going to be shot up a little bit, so something to consider for pitching. Um. Let's move on to sticks. I mean, just look at top stack percentage and then everyone else. Stack score and everyone else. So right now it's got the Dodgers, uh, Padres, Rangers, Guardians, Atlanta, Seattle, Miami. The list goes on and on and on. So what are you thinking on getting to besides the Dodgers? Because we're all going to get to the Dodgers in one one way or another. I can't believe they have a 7.8 implied total. Or that that's just like I don't think I've ever seen that before in my life. But I don't think I have either. Um after that it's just like a bunch of I, I mean there's not really much differentiating like the next 10 stacks, they all have five run and play totals, all have, you know, fairly okay matchups. You know, 
the Dodgers, I mean, how do you get away from at least three of them? Um, I don't know which ones I like the most right now. Like Vargas has been so bad, so cold. Same with Altman. He hasn't been the same since the beginning of the year. Peralta, same thing. They're just all just kind of meh. But again, it's Seabald in cores. So I don't know. We'll have to find a way around that. But other than that, I like Texas against Manning. They project fairly well almost every slate anyway. So I can get to some Texas here, even though they let down people yesterday. Like the Padres a little get it a little bit against Rich Hill. Uh, if he can walk a couple guys, he can get in trouble. I think that's what happened to him in his last slate. Cleveland gaining, you know, 15% as a stack. I absolutely hate. I, I looked at them a little bit before I saw the ownership, and I I'm not doing it if they're gonna be owned on a 15 game slate. Seattle against Urban. I'm sure they can do some damage again today. Atlanta against Joe Ryan, probably not. Not, And you probably can't afford him anyways if you're playing Dodgers, so probably off them. Miami gets Jazz back today. I'd like them a little bit against Whitlock. And I also like Boston, the other side of the game, against Sandy, who hasn't looked good all year, and their price tags are pretty fair. Philly was a mini I started with with Turner and Schwarber, but if that game gets you know, canceled for whatever reason, obviously they're not in play, but uh, Schwarber against his former team. That's just an interesting spot I like. Other than that, I mean, nothing really stands out. I wouldn't really prioritize anything below, like maybe the 12th team in the stack tool. Yeah. <clears throat> it, it, it's kind of crazy to see that the Rangers and the Braves have like a positive leverage score here. Um, the thing I think about with the Rangers is they lost seven to two yesterday. So I kind of think that the Rangers have a little bit of, they have a little bit of it in them to like try to steal a win and put up some runs today. Cleveland was interesting and now I see their minus 8% leverage. So not getting to them. Atlanta against Jill Ryan. You know, Atlanta's got a 1.6% leverage score, uh, 5.1 implied total. I can see it a little bit, but, I mean, it's Joe Ryan. He's actually been pretty decent this year. So, uh, you said it earlier, too, Miami getting Chisholm back against Garrett Whitlock. That might be an interesting spot there. You were saying something about... Kansas City facing this Gavin Williams doing a mini. And that wouldn't be – that's not a bad idea at all. Hopefully you get Bobby Witt or – who else is on that damn team? They're all ass, but – Perez. Bobby, Bobby Witt, Perez, Garcia. Prado. Who? Nick Prado. Oh, yeah. Getting to minis of those guys, they should be fairly cheap. Um, I was looking into Baltimore a little bit against Andrew Abbott, and then I realized that Abbott is like a crazy pitcher, and he's actually not terrible. Will you, would you be willing to take a shot at Colorado against Kershaw just because of the course factor? Uh, usually I do take shots in Colorado, but it just doesn't seem like the spot to do it today. Uh, we've done that like the last two weeks. We've reversed Colorado a bunch against Chalk, and it's been pretty, pretty meh results. Um, like if anything, I'd maybe get a two man with Nolan Jones and McMahon or something. The actual good players on the team. I should have clarified and said, like, not a full, you know, 4-2-2 two, two and have Colorado be the four, but, like, getting to any against Kershaw. Mm-hmm. Um, Seattle looks good again. You said it earlier, Boston against Alcantara. Boston and Miami just both look pretty decent. The Angels against Kopech, sure. Uh, you can't roster Otani though, because he's pitching. 
Yeah, that's that's. I, that's I was, I, I was just gonna say like, oh yeah, just go with Otani, but I forgot he's pitching. Other than that, not much else. Not much else is standing out. There's definitely some spots you can get different, but just pick a stack you like and, you know, it's a 15-game slate. Shit's going to happen. Um, you want to do lineup generator or? We can do home runs first. All right, go ahead. So the Dodgers on the slate, so you know how to go Freddie, obviously. I'm going to go Kyle Schwarber against Chicago and then Pete Alonso for the Mets. So I'm going to go with Mookie Betts, of course, Jonathan India, and Jerry Klenick. Klenick is overly due. He's been kind of crap recently. He's so due, it's unbelievable. All right, so now on to the lineup generator. So MLB DFS lineup generator. You guys know the drill by now. What stack are we thinking today? Or do you just want to run all since it's a huge slate? Let's just let's just run all and see where it's where it's going. When did, uh, uh, go balance. Let's see where the Dodgers end up. Actually, I'm curious which ones pop the most. <laughs> you want to throw like, let's just throw Wu in there for now. That's like the price range I'm in. Interesting. That one's not bad. Four, three, four. Yeah, four, three, one. The line of the loves Will Brennan. I don't get it. <laughs> Just go ahead and save 20. Let's see what's going on. So, Brian Wu, obviously, we locked him in. Really likes. Ready, of course. Ready. The Dodgers, Cleveland. And then it's kind of a mix. A little bit of KC here. Uh, Whit Perez there. You know. Seattle. Not getting much love to Seattle. Not as much, but. All right, so. Of course, we're not going to be playing Cleveland, but line of generator loves them right now. <clears throat> so this is also just a good way to get your mind going and figuring out what this likes. And you can hand build lineups or you can export them to a CSV. Just go from there. Uh, that should just about do it, though. Is there anything else you want to recap or add on to that we missed out on? No, just uh, make sure to check out our lineup about 10 minutes before lock. We've finally got, you know, some steam rolling uh, the last couple of days, so hopefully we can keep it going to the end of the month. Uh, make sure to check out Stochastic Tools in our description and like and subscribe if you haven't already.